It was the night before the holiday season. Leah went to the living room to check the presents. She found a letter from Santa. In this letter, he said that overall, she'd been good the whole year. That's why she'd get the gift she's been dreaming about. But since she had her bad moments too, she would have to find it. There were five wrapped presents. As soon as the girl opened one, the other four would disappear. Her present had a square shape, had a red ribbon, and wasn't small. Which present should Leah open? It's this one, big, square, and decorated with a red ribbon. Mrs. Brown was a landlady of an apartment building with a no-pet policy. Not even fish were allowed. One night, she heard a cat meowing. The sound was coming from the floor above. The next day, she inspected two apartments. In which apartment does the cat live? Look, the furniture and curtains in this apartment have scratch marks. There must be a cat somewhere there. Now take a look at these two people. One of them is a happy owner of a dog. But which one? It must be this person. Look, his clothes are covered in dog hair. Sierra's cat has five kittens. Four of them are white and three have black spots. If every kitten is either white or has black spots, how many kittens are white with black spots? Four plus three is seven. There are just five kittens, which means that the surplus two are the ones who have both characteristics. They are white with black spots. It's that night of the year, and Santa is sneaking into houses with presents. But it's not only Santa that decided to pay people a visit. Look at these two chimneys. Where is the real Santa? Have a look! This guy has huge legs, and some green fur is poking out of his boots. It must be Grinch! The real Santa is this one. Ho, ho. A tricky question for you. Frosty the snowman went to see the dermatologist because his head felt itchy and dry. What does the snowman get when he scratches his head? Of course, it's snowflakes. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's ID cards and not let any suspicious people in. Take a look at these IDs and try to figure out who isn't supposed to enter the club. So, here's the first one. He seems fine. Let him in. What can you say about this man? Would you let him in? Don't let him in. There's a typo in the word date, which is unacceptable for official documents. Okay, next. Look at this woman. In or out. This woman's photo is obviously too old. Normally, IDs have recent photos, or at least people are recognizable in them. This photo must be 20 years old. That's too suspicious. Okay, here's the next guest. What's your verdict? He seems fine to me. And what about this woman? In or out? She seems all right. Green light. Okay, another one. In or out? Yep, 
Year of birth, 1099? Way too suspicious. Don't let her in. Not this time, young lady. Daniela is a new detective in town, and there's a case for her to solve. At night, someone robbed a mall and stole all the presents prepared for the winter show. In the morning, the videos from security cameras were analyzed. There were three main suspects. All of them were interrogated. Bernard said, I have nothing to do with it. I came back from work yesterday and I was watching football until I fell asleep. Samuel said, Today in the evening I was very tired so I just went to sleep and, and you woke me up. And Jason said, I was studying all night for my exam in the afternoon. Who should Daniela arrest? Both Samuel and Jason look very tired, but only Jason has a valid reason for not sleeping. Also, Samuel called the previous day, today, by mistake, which means that he probably didn't sleep that night, and there was no clear difference for him between the two days. A detective was on a plane when an accident happened. In business class, someone stole an expensive necklace oh, right no. from a lady's neck. It was one hour into the flight, and the lady swore that when she had boarded the plane, she'd still been wearing her jewelry. There were three main suspects, all fellow passengers. Ronald said, As soon as we were allowed to leave our seats, I went to the bathroom to make an important business call. I've just returned. Gabriella said, I was sleeping and listening to music. I didn't leave my seat even once. And Camilla said, I saw the necklace and thought it was beautiful, but why would I steal it? Who do you think is guilty? It must be Ronald. He's on the plane. He can't make calls there. During the winter holidays, Eliza went for a walk in a dark forest. After wandering around, she found an old mansion. Of course, she entered it to see what was inside. As soon as she came in, the door behind her got locked. It was a magical house and it had three exits, but each of them seemed dangerous. Behind the first door, there was a huge lake. Unfortunately, Eliza couldn't swim. Behind the second door, there was a room where big icicles were falling from the ceiling. Behind the third door, a pack of hungry wolves was waiting for Eliza. Uh -oh. Which way should the woman choose to get out of the house safely? Eliza should pick the first door. It's winter. There's snow everywhere. The lake must be frozen, so she won't have to swim. Nicole participated in a game show, and she won three exclusive gifts. A Dolce & Gabbana wallet, a backpack from Dior, and a Tesla. But there was a catch. She had to pick her presents herself by choosing between the original and a replica. Will you help her pick the correct prize? Here are two Dolce & Gabbana wallets. One of them is the original, and the other is a replica. Which one should Nicole choose? This one, it has the correct logo, so it must be the original. Now there are two identical backpacks, but only one of them is the original Dior. Which one? This one with the correct logo. And finally, that Tesla. Let's see if you remember their logo. Yes, this is the correct one. Great job. Esme was walking in a forest, and she didn't even get lost this time. Still, she decided to visit her old friend, the witch, who lived there. Esme had a riddle for her from her math class. If the witch didn't solve it, Esme would get her black cat. So, here's a sequence of numbers from 9 to 1. The witch should add some minus signs so that the result equals 7. Can you help the witch to solve this riddle and keep her cat?
The witch needs five minus signs. She needs to put them this way. Nice try, but not this time, Esme. Cassidy was grounded for two weeks for having bad grades, but her friends were throwing a party, so she decided to sneak out. In the morning, her mother returned from the night shift and asked her daughter how she spent the previous evening. Of course, Cassidy said she'd been studying. And still, Cassidy was grounded for another two weeks. Why? Her mother inspected her room and probably noticed some glitter in Cassidy's hair, smeared lipstick, and a party dress drying on the wardrobe door. At a party, Cassidy was drinking only one kind of drink. Can you guess which one? A little hint for you, it's the only kind of egg you can drink. Of course, it was eggnog. A high-speed express train is leaving in 15 minutes. Security guards are scanning everyone's bags and find one of these three bags very suspicious. Can you guess which one? It's the second luggage. This lady has a heavy book among her things, and the title, Dictionary, has the wrong spelling. Maybe it's just a cover to hide something suspicious? The train departs. Unfortunately, this area is full of rocks, so the road is winding a lot. Only one of these routes will lead the train to the final destination. Can you guess which one? Only the third route is correct. Susan is a first-class passenger. She orders a cup of tea. The waiter brings her what she asked for. Suddenly, Susan sees a fly in her cup and gets terrified. The waiter takes her cup and goes to the kitchen. Then, he returns with a fresh cup of tea. But Susan yells, You brought me the same cup of tea! Gross! How did she know? Susan already had added sugar. The tea was sweet when the waiter brought it back. Susan gets bored and takes a walk around the train. She enters a rail car with three passengers only, Xavier, Gerald, and Peter. One of them can't wait to meet his two daughters when the train arrives at the final destination. He promised to take them to the beach. Can you tell which guy it is? It's Gerald. He has three bucket hats on top of his suitcase. These two cute bucket hats still have price tags, so he probably bought them for his daughters as a gift. The train has arrived. Gerald rents a car to go to the mansion in the forest where his family lives. Unfortunately, the road is surrounded by multiple possessed wild animals. Suddenly, a black cat jumps on the windshield and Gerald crashes into a tree. He has to leave the car and walk to the mansion on his feet. Soon, Gerald finds himself at a crossroad. Can you guess which route is more or less safe? A, B, or C? All three routes have animal footprints. The bushes on the first route are moving even though it's not windy. This means that some animals are hiding behind them. And there's a pair of eyes shining in the dark on the third route. So Gerald will have to move quickly through the second route. It begins to rain heavily. Gerald finds a fancy mansion along the way. The owner invites him inside the house to hide from the rain and grab some snacks. Gerald agrees and finds himself at a glamorous party. There are three models eating in the buffet. One of them is broke. Can you guess who? The second lady. Take a look at her bag. She hides some food for later. 
Gerald walks around the mansion and sees two roommates. One of them is a thief. Can you guess who? It's not the first maid. There's an open safe with diamonds and cash in front of her, but she doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, the second lady has already hidden a diamond in her bucket, so she's the thief. Gerald eats a snack and falls asleep. He wakes up in an old basement. The mansion owner locked him up. Gerald finds a sheet of paper on the floor. It says, I'll give you a chance to get out of here. The key to the door is inside this closed bag. Try to get it. Gerald tries to rip up the bag, but the fabric is too tough. He tries to tear it using his teeth, but he almost breaks a tooth. How can Gerald get the key? He should break a jar and use a fragment of glass to cut the bag and get the key. Gerald opens the door and enters a storage room. There are three doors leading to freedom. A forest full of hungry predatory animals is hiding behind the first door. The second route is filled with toxic gas that's impossible to stand for even a second. And there's a fire behind the third door. Which way is more or less safe? Gerald should choose the third door. There are bottles of water in the room, and the fire is rather small. Gerald can easily put it out. Finally, Gerald is outdoors. But there are three hidden dangers in this garden. Can you find them? There's a crocodile in these rose bushes. A laser beam alarm system is on. And a scorpion is hiding in a tree. Gerald runs away through the forest, but something's wrong with this place. Can you spot three odd details? Take a look at this spruce. Lemons don't grow on this type of tree. This beehive is inhabited by butterflies. Also, there are two moons in the sky. Gerald checks into the local motel to get some rest. He leaves his golden watch on the bed and goes to buy some coffee. In an hour, he returns to the room and sees that someone had stolen the watch. Gerald interrogates three suspects. The maid says, I only entered your room once today to clean it before check-in. I have a master key, but it's always with me in my pocket. The woodworker says, I entered your room an hour ago to fix a creaky bed. Everything's fine now. And Gerald's neighbor says, I was feeling sick. That's why I went to bed earlier. So I didn't hear anything weird. Who stole Gerald's watch? Nobody. The golden watch fell under the bed. See? The next morning, Gerald goes to the motel's lobby to check out. He finds the manager, Lauren, lying unconscious on the floor. Gerald calls the police. They figure out that someone has put Lauren to sleep using an unknown substance and took all the cash. The police officer questioned three people who last saw Lauren conscious and healthy. Rose, Violet, and Lily. After checking out the crime scene, the officer arrests one of the witnesses. Can you guess who and why? Lily, take a look at her hair extensions. They're not distributed evenly. That's because Lauren pulled out one strand and squeezed it in her fist. She wanted to leave a clue leading to the criminal. Gerald has just come back from his long trip. He's trying to open a suitcase, but realizes that he has forgotten the four-number code. Luckily, Gerald left a note that can help him remember the code. Can you figure out the code? Hey. 
That would be too easy to use the given numbers as they are. To crack this mystery, we should mind the numbers of letters in each given number. So, the correct code is 5364. Finally, Gerald can keep his promise and takes his daughters to the beach. He also takes some food for a picnic. Can you guess the name of this food by emojis? Sandwich. Gerald and his wife Anna have a lot in common. Daughters, careers, and a big house. They do everything together. One day, Anna comes home really late. She's tired, but happy. Gerald gets jealous and yells at her. Anna flames out too. I was working all evening. Gerald says, Sorry, Anna, I don't believe you. It looks like you're dating someone else. Anna refuses to talk and goes to bed alone. Meanwhile, Gerald waits for Anna to fall asleep and checks her purse. He finds nail polish, a wallet, a pack of gum, lipstick, and some keys. Now Gerald is completely sure Anna was seeing someone else. How did he know? The keys are definitely not from their house. The next morning, Gerald receives an email from his boss. Can you guess the meaning of this message? It means, great job, you got it. This type of code is called a Caesar box. Because Julius Caesar was known as the first one to write codes this way. To decipher the message, simply divide the code into four groups of four then rearrange them vertically. Hey, ready for some Valentine's Day riddles? Look at these three guys. Which of them is going on a date tonight? Hello. It must be this one. He has a little wrapped present, probably for his date. Aww. Now let's peek inside a restaurant. Which of the three girls is on a date? It's this one. Look, there are roses and two sets of dishes on the table. So she's not alone, and it's something romantic. My money is on her. This is Allison, and one of these three young men is her boyfriend. Can you tell who? It's this one. Look, they have matching tattoos. Take a look at these two proposals. Which one of them is fake? This one. Look, the guy has a ring. He's clearly already married. It was Friday evening and Mark was waiting for his girlfriend to get back from work. He prepared dinner and was about to propose. His girlfriend came back home with flowers. Do you think she was on a date with someone? No, she wasn't. Look outside. The same flowers grow in their garden. She just picked some before entering the house. <laughs> on Valentine's Day, Annika found a love note on her desk. Unfortunately, the note wasn't signed, but she had three suspects. Hmm. So she asked each of them if they had written her a note. Dylan said, I was busy finishing my math homework before class. Connor said, I was hanging out with my buddies outside. Mm. And Luke said, I was in the bathroom and I just returned. Who wrote Annika the letter? It was Luke. Look, his hands are covered in red ink. That's the color used in the letter. Also, if he had really been to the bathroom, his hands would be clean. On Valentine's Day, Jess found a note in her locker. Hmm. But the note was weird. It was just a sequence of random letters. Or was it some code? Hmm. Can you help Jess read the note and figure out who sent it to her? Of 
course it's a code. Look, there are five groups of letters with five letters in each group. Let's put them into a five by five table. And now we need to read this vertically column by column. Will you go out with me, Colton? So where's that Colton? Michelle was hosting a Valentine's Day party. She invited all her school friends and everyone was allowed to bring a plus one. Either their significant other or a single friend. In the middle of the party, she noticed that her cousin was in the garden talking to some girl, but it was dark and she couldn't tell which girl it was. She just saw that the girl had long hair. When her cousin returned, she knew immediately who he was interested in. Here are three girls with long hair. Who was outside with Michelle's cousin? Look, Michelle's cousin has a lipstick stain. The girl must have left it. And this girl right here is wearing lipstick of the same shade. On a cold, rainy night, Damon was driving past a bus stop. There were three people there waiting for their bus. Oh. An elderly lady who looked sick, a doctor who had saved many lives, and Addison, a girl Damon had a crush on for years. Unfortunately, there was only room for one more person in his car. What should Damon do? He should give his car to the doctor, who would then take the lady to the hospital. And Damon can stay at the bus stop waiting for the bus with the girl of his dreams. Looking like a hero in her eyes. Yeah! Let's take a little break now. Have you seen any romantic movies? Well, I hope so, because I'll be showing you some emojis, and your task will be to guess what romantic movie they stand for. Okay, here's the first, very easy one. Of course, that's Titanic. Here's the next one. Nothing much, but it should be clear. Do you know this movie? It's The Notebook. What about this one? A relatively recent remake was a great success. Can you recognize it? It's A Star Is Born. Here's the next one. Do you think you can guess it right? It's before sunrise. The next set of emojis illustrates another very well-known love story. Can you guess it right? It's La La Land, of course. Here's the last one. It's an oldie but a goodie. What do you think? Everyone's favorite, The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind with Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey. It was Valentine's Day and Nicole wanted to put a little present in the locker of the student she had a crush on. Ah. Unfortunately, she didn't know the code. Luckily for her, the owner of the locker was forgetful too. So there was a note with a hint. Hmm. Can you figure out the combination? Each number is the number of lines in the respective letter. There is just one line in I, four lines in M, three in H, and two in T. So, following the same logic, there are four lines in E, two in L, two in V, and three in Z. So the combination is four, two, two, three. Okay, here's another code for you to crack. This time, you need to help Eric. He wants to get his wife a nice Valentine's Day gift, but he is absolutely clueless about what she wants. So the plan is to break into her computer, check her shopping cart, and get something from there. The problem is that the computer requires a passcode, and the man doesn't know it. Luckily, there's a note on the desk, so he types in 6198. 
But the passcode is wrong. Can you figure out what the correct passcode is? The note is just turned upside down. Eric should try typing in 8619 instead. Kennedy works in the emergency room. It's Valentine's Day and there's a patient who felt unwell during a college party. Kennedy leaves the room because she needs to talk to the patient's girlfriend. She was at the party with him. Which young woman should she approach? Who is the guy's date? Keep in mind that the couple was at a party, so they must be dressed nicely. The patient's date is most likely this woman in a pretty dress. Now, let's do some exercises to train your eyes. Here's a bunch of hearts. Can you find one broken heart? Yes, here it is. Good job. The task is similar, but not quite. Now there are many hearts and a few broken hearts. How many broken hearts are there? There are five broken hearts here. Have you found them all? The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. Someone has attacked our chef. He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. My rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business. When police officers came to the restaurant, they found out that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police that tears had blurred his vision and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimps when the accident happened. He said that he had been listening to music through his earphones and he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. There can't be shrimps in a vegan restaurant. Eric was having lunch in a cafe. At one point, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. When he came back, the phone was missing. Eric saw a man leaving the place and ran after him. Eric stopped him when the man was about to sit in a car and asked him to return the gadget. But the man claimed to know nothing about the phone. He said that he had just given his friends a lift to work and he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car is a sports convertible with just two seats. It can't fit three men. The police got a call from the house of a wealthy man who didn't come back after going for a jog. When several officers arrived, they questioned the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast, and I immediately got down to work. But it's been three hours, and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other, and I went to work. The driver told the police he'd been waiting for his boss in the car, looking through his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The maid's lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have turned brown by now. Now, look at poor Dwight. Someone has pulled a paint bucket prank on him. Look at his colleagues and try to figure out who it was. It was definitely Jim. Look at his pants. There are paint stains there. Now, look at these girls. Who's going to be the first to escape? It's going to be the first girl. She's got long, beautiful nails. She's bound to have a file to look after them. It can help her cut the rope. 
one of these people on the train is hiding some treasure. Who can it be? It's this woman. She pretends to be pregnant, but her belly is suspiciously square. Look at these two girls. Who will be the first to escape? The one on the right. She hasn't touched her food because she uses her spoon to dig a tunnel. The girl on the right has managed to escape, but the tunnel splits into two smaller ones. One is swarming with snakes, and in the other, a fire is raging. What should she do? She should dig another tunnel above these two. She's got her spoon after all. David was a famous antique dealer in his town, but there were loads of people who envied him. The man had a beautiful young daughter called Liza. One evening, when the antiquarian was busy in his workshop, his phone rang. A man told him that they had David's daughter. If he wanted to see her again, he had to give his jewelry collection to the man waiting at the doors. David requested to talk to his daughter. He asked her just one question. I have two hands, but I can't scratch myself. What am I? When David heard no answer, he said, It's not my daughter, and hung up. What's the answer to this riddle? Liza would know that her father was talking about a clock. It took nine years to build the world's tallest skyscraper. Every next year, the builders managed to double its height. How many years did it take the skyscraper to reach half of its maximum height? Eight years. If the constructors doubled the building's height every year, the skyscraper was half of its final height a year before it was completed. Divide 30 by one half and add 10. What will you get? The correct answer is 70. Most people divide 30 by two, add 10 and get 25. But when you divide a number by a fraction, you should actually multiply it by the denominator, which is the number below the line. This way, 30 times 2 plus 10 equals 70. You find yourself in the middle of a forest with three paths in front of you. The first one is covered with burning hot coals. The second path is so cold that it feels like Antarctica right under your feet. And the third path is covered with sharp nails. Which path uh -oh. should you choose? The second path. All that ice is bound to be gone soon. It's too close to the hot coals. The police were looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he'd spent these last days at work getting ready for a conference. Jeremy told the detectives he sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. He even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's responsible for the accident with Kyle? Billy showed the police just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Jordan was very late for a job interview, but when he drove up to the office building, he found out there were no free parking spaces. He decided to leave his car a bit further from the entrance. Oh no, even though there were several other vehicles in that area, parking was prohibited there. Luckily, Jordan came up with an idea and didn't get fined. What did he do?
he took a parking ticket from another car and put it on his windshield. It looked as if he'd already been fined. Hey, I didn't say it was an honest solution. That day, famous chef Logan was going to have some very important guests in his restaurant. He was anxious because his future depended on how they would appreciate his food. Everything had to be perfect. There was only one hour left before the guests were supposed to arrive. And that's when Logan discovered someone had left ugly red handprints on his sparkling white jacket. He examined the stains. It was ketchup. Logan knew that some of the cooks didn't like him. Look at them and try to help the chef figure out who's guilty. There's a pair of gloves stained with something red in the trash can. The only person who isn't wearing any gloves is the cook on the left. He was the one to spoil Logan's uniform. Linda was in a cafe with her boyfriend and their date wasn't going very well. At one point, they both got angry and started to argue. Suddenly, their waiter came up to the table and handed something to Linda. It was a note with a strangely written word. Lowercase t, uppercase r, lowercase o, uppercase u, lowercase b, lowercase l, lowercase e. Trouble? Linda was confused. What could it mean? Can you figure it out? It's a rebus puzzle. The waiter got worried and asked Linda, are you in trouble? 